Hello and welcome to the Ant-Man channel. It is Monday the 16th of, Ju of June, sorry. My, my calendar is in Spanish and it says Julio. I guess I have it wrong then. Or I guess that's how you say June in Spanish. Um, it's kind of embarrassing. I don't even know what June is in Spanish. But anyways, it is 2014. I am hot today, man. Like, I am angry. And I'll tell you why. Because when I wake up, I see a notification from, um, what was it, CNN on my phone, and it says that Barack Obama is now banning discrimination against the LGBT or something like that. The tyranny is getting ramped up on us, you guys. Uh, now it's really, if you're a Christian, man, you're being called to step up now. You're being, you're being called out to step up for society, to be a leader. To be an example, to encourage your fellow believers, to put dissension and arguments and all that stuff aside, and get ready for war. Put on our armor of light. Put away dark things, immorality, and all that stuff. Whatever you're doing, you need to knock it off. You need to, you need to pray more. You need to read your Bible more. You need to go to Sunday school more. <laughs> but you guys, yeah. Don't miss out on this opportunity to be strengthened in the Word, because that's what you're going to need in the future, if this continues. If what I knew was what I was going to have to say to you right now wasn't so... I'm so convinced now, and convicted about what I'm going to say, but I wasn't going to say it yet, but I think that I'm, I was right. And it's because I heard it from my pastor, and I've heard it from other people as well. Other people who are teachers and and pastors I see persecution coming I see real persecution coming in the United States they're taking away Christians jobs now based on moral issues like if you don't want to bake a cake for a homosexual they could sue you and take away your job uh, pretty soon man pretty soon they'll be putting us in jail pretty soon they'll be putting us in jail and beating us and all kinds of stuff I see it. This is mob rule. This is majority tyranny. This is this is how they all go down in history. You know, you could persecute us Christians, but you'll never God's immutable. So you can kill me, but the ideas, the things that I'm convicted in and the things that I am driven by, my passion for God will live on. I may die, but you're not going to you're not going to silence God and he can have as many people on this earth as he wants. I forgot who said it. I think, uh, I think it was like Paul. Man, someone correct me if I'm wrong. He said, uh, if God wanted to, he can make... Uh, or I think, oh, it was Jesus. Jesus said this. He was talking to the Pharisees. Wow. And he said, do not say to yourselves that we are, we are sons of Abraham. But I tell you that God can, from these very stones, raise up children. So, I mean, he's God. He's, God. he's powerful. He can do whatever he wants. He's preserved a book for you to read, by the way, so that you can know how to live your life good. But if you're a Christian, man, I'm telling you, before I read this article, get stronger. Read the Word. You're going to need it. So, ClashDaily.com has an article called Traitors on Every Corner, What to Do, written by Rick David, and this was on June 9th, 2014. So, it was an interesting week. Tuesday was primary day in a number of states. Here in Iowa, the big news was that Republicans picked Joni Ernst to run against Democratic or Democrat Congressman Bruce Braley, who has no respect for farmers, to fill the seat left vacant by retiring Senator Tom Harkin. The Republicans had a crowded field to choose from. The establishment rhinos originally put their money on liberal businessman Mark Jacobs from Texas. But once people figured out that he was a big donor to Democrat candidates, he started to fade. The establishment then anointed State Senator Joni Ernst. She uh, didn't get my vote. She voted for the runner-up, or I voted for the runner-up, Sam Clovis. Again, this is Rick David who's saying this. Sam Clovis, or Sam Clovis, excuse me, an ex-fighter pilot like me, who also like me, is pro-life, pro-traditional marriage, pro-Second Amendment, along with all of the fiscal conservative bona fides. You could say he's 100% conservative, sort of like Reagan. He hasn't jettisoned his moral principles to get elected. 
but Ernst got the nod from the party bigwigs. Romney endorsed. Uh, Romney endorsed her. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce endorsed her and spent thousands on TV ads for her. The chamber is pushing amnesty for illegal aliens, but Ernst swears she's not for amnesty. I'm sure they just endorsed her because Romney picked her. And in fact, Senator Marco Rubio was also opposed amnesty, who also opposes amnesty, came to Iowa to campaign for her. I heard the two of them being interviewed on the Simon Conway radio show on WHO, home of Ronald Reagan. As they took questions from callers, Rubio said something that just floored me, since this was also the week that Obama illegally traded five Taliban jihadists for an American deserter and jihadist. Some of the callers were up in arms, well not literally yet, over what they considered treason on Obama's part, and several asked the candidate and senator if they would vote to impeach Obama. Rubio said that he would not support impeachment because, ready for this, it would be too divisive. Da. You know, um, I prayed today very earnestly. I always, I was, you know, I'm not particularly bragging about this. I'm not trying to say this is even a good thing. Even our best prayers are not even good, you guys. We're, we're very selfish in our prayers, and you should know that. Be humble about it. But you know, the, the Holy Spirit prays for you and, inter inter and intercedes for you <clears throat> because you do not pray right fully. But I was, I was literally yelling at God today because I was like, do you not care? But I don't think it's that. I know he cares. It's just that, man, it's infuriating. Our, our president is rubbing salt in our wounds, man. He not only lives above the law, but he frees hardened terrorists and he keeps the good people like Pastor Saeed Abedini, who is in jail still in Iran, he keeps him in, in. He doesn't free our own people, but he frees. I mean, you got to be really stupid, you guys, if you guys really believe that this president is anyone who he says he is or who the establishment says he is. <laughs> the establishment, what a joke. This guy's a traitor. Big time. Big time. Admit it to yourself. It has nothing to do with him being black and that I'm uh, secretly, I'm, I'm just a, a bigot. I'm secretly a racist and I don't like black people and I'm jealous of him or something. It's not anything like that. Obama has nothing that I want from him. He's not even that cool in my honest opinion. He may be, he may be like good with words and he's like funny. He's like, hey, me, hey, hey, da, da, da. That was not, that sounded more like Clinton than Barack Obama, but... I don't really care about the man's skin. I don't care about where he comes from and all this stuff, dude. But he is a freaking traitor. You gotta be ridiculously ignorant to not see this, you guys. And to hide it, that's what they're marking you as. Notice that it's coming from those people that are his buddies in the media and stuff. Coming out to tell, to try to put this guilt upon you. You know, that just because you're calling it what it is... Oh no, he's just a racist. Believe me, black people, I'm not jealous of you. That's cool that you're, that you guys, you know what I mean? The NBA is full of black people and there's a lot of talented black people. That's wonderful. I'm, I'm happy for you. But that, no, that's not, I'm not jealous of you at all. Why would I be jealous of you? There's no reason to be jealous of anybody. You should be content with what you have. I'm a Christian. I believe I am a very loved by God person, I'm very happy with that. Who wouldn't be? To, it's very prideful for you to think of yourself as someone that society is jealous of for some reason. That's pride. And that's not true. You know what I mean? Like, don't, don't give in to this system that's making you feel all entitled and to, to act the way that you do, man, because it's a lie. You're, they're, they're using you like pawns on a, on a chessboard. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting other people. So knock it off. Because nobody's jealous of you. Nobody's, I'm not saying that in a derogatory way, but nobody's jealous of you. And, and you need to knock it off because it's ignorant to say that. I am judging the man based off of his virtue and the way that he deals business. Not because of the color of his skin. Obviously, this guy has no virtue and he has no 
fear of God, and he and he's not our and he's not our friend. He's not a, he does not represent me as an American. He does not represent me. Obama's not divisive with a question mark. The Democrats are not divisive. The country isn't divided. What planet is this guy on? We have a president who promised to fu fundamentally transform our country and has since done everything in his power to destroy it. As I have written here before, any thinking person can only conclude that Obama is a jihadist at war with America. I am glad to see that some others are getting on board with me. Keith Davies from the Chobot Foundation wrote this week, The evidence is clear. Obama is nothing more than a treasonous Islamic terrorist. And convicted campaign donor Dinesh D'Souza is promoting his new movie and draws the same conclusion. It's hilarious how brainwashed everyone is because they look at us Christians like we're the problem and we're the ones that go around crusading and spilling blood. Yet, you look the other way and you see that they're the ones doing that. And yet, they are the ones being protected as well. Like it's, oh, go after Christianity, but let's defend Islam. How brainwashed are you? They're the ones running around decapitating people because they don't believe in their God. Have you not been listening to us Christians at all? We're trying to tell you, dude, that we're loving on you by telling you that God exists. We know that we're going to get hated for it, but we don't care. Christ died on the cross. You think he cared about... He said, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they're doing. So that, because, they do not, because they know not what they do. I know, that I'm, I'm like the most politically incorrect person out there, dude. I, I don't care. I'm green labeled, whatever, dude. I don't care. You know what, man? Uh, good. If we need martyrs, I guess that's good. Because you need to wake up. Do something for God's sake, man. I'm not even going to read the rest of this, this article. But if you want to check it out, I'll put a link to it. But yeah, I would say that in this culture, there are traitors everywhere. Because you know what the media teaches you to be like? A gangbanger. How do gangbangers act? Well, let's put it in God's eyes in a perspective that it has to do with sin. Criminals do not like going in front of a judge. They do not like getting caught by the police. So do you think a, a, a generation, a society that's like, you know, like kind of trained to think gangbanger-like likes the truth in Christianity and all this stuff? No. Because what I see is that when I go out and I hang out with, like, if I... if this is just this, this is a scenario. This isn't like real. This didn't, didn't really happen. It's just like a parable, if you will. If I'm hanging out with a bunch of people in the world, and one of them knocks my drink out of my hand just to be funny, and I say, hey, man, I paid a dollar for that. You know, like, are you going to buy me a new one, or are you going to take a rap on the chin? You decide. Um, the other guys around me are going to yell at me because I'm the, one, I'm the one that wants justice. I'm the one that wants to do things right. Society has been brainwashed to defend criminals and to give up good people, righteous people, people who are trying to get justice done, people who call out tyrants for what they are and stuff. You are domesticated. You aren't uh, in this like arrested development society that is, is, is totally brainwashed you. It has totally made you have Stockholm Syndrome and like, you know... It's sad, but with a lot of Hispanics, they think that way. It's like, they, they think they're running program and they're in jail when they're free. And they're out in the free world. I see that a lot with Hispanics. Like, they think, like, like being a gangster and being locked up is something to be proud of, man. It's like, no, it's not. That's a horrible thing. I've been to jail. It's not fun. It's, it's, if I didn't have God, I'd be anxious all the time. But I didn't. I walked in there with my head held high. Excuse me. That was God right there trying to humble me, by the way. I went in there with my head held high, and, and I left there with my head held high, with my integrity intact. I didn't bow down to nobody in there. I didn't back down to nobody in there. And you know why, dude? Because I knew God was with me in there. I knew that I wasn't going to get killed in there. I knew that I was going to go free after I did my time. I'm not the ultimate example, Jesus says. But if you guys want to check out this... Uh, article man i mean free your minds guys don't don't live in this society to please people because people are messed up these days they want you to glorify gangbanging glorify being a thug and being like you know selfish and prideful and it's not true dude it's not good so i say i say look to god more and more man because you know the world's getting darker the love of many is growing cold we must fight man we must continue we must be diligent and one 
you know, to finish the race as much as, you know, you remember that passion you had when you were born again, man? Whatever that vision was, man, get it again and get on track with us. It's like, it's like if you went to a, uh, if you were on a soccer team and you missed one day of training and then you go to the game and you play and you didn't run the drills that you learned. That's kind of how it is with us Christians, man. We're always all on the same track for some reason. I see that. We're always all thinking about the same thing. We're always all keeping up with things and, 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 and the word of God. And I'm telling you, man, stay on track because you know what I mean? You want to be, you want to be in the front lines with us, man. All right. But anyways, God bless you and have a good day.